Welcome to Greenhorn Linux. Linux for Greenhorns. On this episode of Greenhorn Linux, we learn what to do if the Unity desktop environment has you feeling blue. Perhaps your aging computer can't support the Unity desktop environment. Perhaps you just want a normal looking desktop. Never fear, Adam is here to the rescue. Today we will install other desktop environments. Adam even guarantees that one of them will be awesome. I realize this is probably more of an advanced topic, but I feel that it's very, very important to get the desktop environment that really suits your needs. Now, the nice thing about this is there's really no risk. Um, basically, what happens during the uh, the Linux uh, startup is the very first thing that happens is a lot of core components load. So um, I personally am a huge fan of the Ubuntu core components. And then uh, you'll come into the login screen, which um, as long as you have that activated, uh, you'll see the login screen. And then once you hit the login screen, then all of the desktop environment uh, components load. So this is where we are booting into the Ubuntu core components. Um, the only way you could actually speed up this process would be maybe using a different distribution's core components. So for example, Arch Linux, which is known to be pretty fast for the boot up and stuff, and maybe not as heavy during this part, um, would be much, much faster. Uh, personally, uh, I'm, uh, I like the stability of Ubuntu, so that's why I've chosen that as the core components. And then eventually we'll get to the login screen. Now once you're here, this is what I was talking about where uh, you could choose a different desktop environment. And then this is where the different desktop environments uh, components would load up. And some are much faster than others, as you will see. So I've tried many different desktop environments with the Ubuntu core. Uh, and I've really had very, uh, I've had basically no conflicts or no issues. The only thing I have noticed is sometimes your splash screens may change. Um, it's not really that big of a deal. Uh, so the way this will work is a whole bunch of files will be uh, installed, um, but it won't really slow down your computer because what will happen is uh, once you pick a desktop environment, if those components aren't needed for that desktop environment, then they're not going to load during that process when the desktop environment is triggered. So uh, bottom line is it's pretty risk free. Uh, I haven't had any conflicts and it's not going to slow down your system. The only thing you will need is enough hard drive space to install it. But again, these desktop environments really don't take up that much space. And I'll be able to show you how much space each one takes up during the install process. Okay, so today I'm going to show you how to install XFCE4, LXDE, and if you're really hardcore, the awesome Windows Manager. Now, pros and cons to each. XFCE is kind of middle of the pack as far as resources go, a uh, similar style to uh, Windows XP or, and or similar to Windows 7, I suppose. Uh, LXDE, much lower resources um, for that desktop environment, similar to, I would say, Windows 95. The awesome Windows Manager, it's tile-based, super small with resources, but uh, man, it is hardcore. Um, I won't, I'm going to do uh, an official video on this like way down the road, um, but uh, again, I guess it's more for advanced users. Uh, if you want to play around with it, that's awesome. I'll give you links on how to get started, but you're going to do a lot of reading, um, and it is not easy to use. But once you start understanding it, um, it could really help your workflow. Now, I've just mentioned a few. There are many, many others. There's KDE, which is, uh, I guess, the most similar to probably Windows 7. Uh, the Cinnamon, uh, uh, which is uh, part of the Mint, uh, um, Linux Mint distribution. Uh, there's GNOME 3 uh, point whatever they're on now. There's Fluxbox. Again, check out my site, uh, and then you can just see if they're in Ubuntu repositories. Um, I'm not going to go over all of those, but uh, there are tons and tons of desktop environments. Okay, now I'm going to show you how to install all three. Uh, pick none of these if you're happy with Unity. Uh, pick all of them. Uh, pick a different one. Um, whatever you want to do. And if you want to see kind of how these look before you actually install them, skip ahead in the video. You can kind of get a sense uh, of, of how these are set up, how they look, and some of the settings and stuff that you can choose once you're in that desktop environment. So let's get started. Okay, first thing we're going to do is we're going to go to our dash. And we are actually going to go to the Ubuntu Software Center. So just type in Software Center and it should pop up. Okay, and then in the search box, we're going to type in XFCE. And then you can see this will pop up, Meta Package for the XFCE Lightweight Desktop Environment. Click Install. And this is XFCE4. It'll ask for your password. Um, this is just saying that it's going to install software on your system. And uh, Linux is nice because it always asks for your password. So it's a little bit more uh, secure than uh, perhaps the Windows operating system. 
forgot to show you if you click on this and you click more information and then when you scroll down uh, it'll tell you how much space this will take up um, and you can see right here that how much to download 67.8 megabytes when installed so not bad so we're also going to type in some xfce4 goodies so type in xfce4 and then type uh, with a dash goodies and then this should pop up and if you want you click more information to see how much space it's going to take uh, just click install uh, basically this gives you a whole bunch of awesome sensors and um, uh, other stuff that helps enhance the xfc desktop you don't necessarily need this but uh, i recommend it since we're here we're going to install one more thing for the xfc desktop environment uh, it's called xf WM for Windows Manager and 4 and uh, what we're going to do is we are actually going to install the uh, themes um, basically this just gives you a lot more themes for the XFC desktop environment this isn't necessarily needed again but uh, it's a nice thing to have it doesn't take up too much space okay that's it for the XFCE desktop environment so let's move on to LXDE just type in LXDE into uh, the search and then uh, you're gonna find the LXDE uh, X11 desktop environment uh, if you want you can click more information just to see how much space this is going to take up and basically it's going to be uh, 50 megabytes approximately once installed so again not bad at all click install okay and last desktop uh, actually Windows Manager not really desktop environment is the awesome Windows Manager so just type in awesome and then you're gonna click this one highly configurable next generation framework window manager for X you can click the more information to see how much space it's going to take up uh, for the install you can see this is the lightest with uh, approximately six megabytes when installed so just click install I also recommend installing additional modules for awesome uh, it just makes uh, the experience much better so just type in awesome dash extra and again if you wanted more information you can click the more information to see how much space um, but uh, just click uh, install and just one more thing that will help you out in awesome is a program called FEH. Uh, it's an image viewer. Uh, just click install. Okay, and once that is all installed, we are going to log out. Okay, and at the login screen, once you click this little icon here, you should have access to everything we just installed. You can see we have LXDE, we have Ubuntu, or the Unity desktop environment, XFCE, and Awesome. Okay, so let's take a quick look at each one. Uh, XFCE first. Okay, at this point it'll say welcome to your first uh, startup of XFCE. I'm just going to use the default configuration. Okay, that's it. We're booted in much, very, very fast. Uh, down here, these are called panels. Uh, if you right click on them, panels, you can go to panel preferences. This is panel one. See how it's highlighted with the, um, uh, the red border. Um, and then we go to panel two. Uh, I'm just going to, for example, remove it. You don't have to. Um, so I'm just going to say remove the panel. Do you want to remove it? Yes. Um, this one, I'm going to say change down to, oh, not vertical. I'm going to change, uh, uh, I'm not going to lock it I'm just gonna move it down here and then now I'm gonna lock it and now this is just like a, a Windows uh, kind of setup if you click here you have everything for your um, applications um, and then if you want you can go to settings uh, settings manager and then here you can click your appearance um, just mess around with this. this is where you can set up your keyboard shortcuts uh, you have access to a whole bunch of stuff in the past I've accidentally deleted all of my panels which kind of sucks but because uh, and then I I had no idea how to get it back but uh, if you just right click go to applications and then you can go to settings settings manager uh, here you can click panel and then you can just recreate your entire panel uh, you can add a whole bunch of items to this like a CPU uh, uh, thing uh, uh, a whole bunch of stuff so just uh, fool around with that as much as you want all right and real quick I'll show you how to fix something you may notice there's no icons near the terminal emulator and stuff like that so we're gonna fix that real quick go to settings settings manager go to appearance click icons uh, the gnome icon set I don't think is um, installed so you can try like for example tango and then now you can see we have our icons there so and then when you go back into setting manager after it reloads the icons should appear which they do okay next let's check out uh, LXDE real quick okay that's it this is LXDE you can see it automatically comes with a little uh, CPU uh, monitor down here at the bottom uh, again here's your applications uh, you can change your themes and stuff like that um, by uh, uh, going into uh, preferences and then just looking for the uh, open box configuration manager and then here you'll be able to change themes how everything looks um, again just mess around with it uh, this is more like it feels to me like a Windows 95 style not as many uh, choices and settings but uh, it's 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 pretty quick it's a very lightweight uh, uh, desktop environment
And finally, let's check out Awesome real quick. Okay, this is awesome. That's it. It just loaded. It's very, very quick. Uh, you can see uh, nothing uh, launch uh, as far as icons. You basically have nothing. So uh, again, this is a lot more hardcore, but uh, some of the uh, uh, niceties is um, uh, tile-based. Uh, you can change your layout to uh, the different layouts over here. Um, you can either click it or you can hit uh, Windows plus the space bar. Um, again, I don't expect anyone to um, uh, grasp this uh, extremely quickly it's taken me a while to learn how to use this your sound applet uh, hasn't loaded uh, again remember how I said uh, Linux is all about modules well in this desktop environment you have to pick which modules you want loaded during startup so you're gonna have to figure all of that out um, I will give you a starting point uh, not that this means anything to you um, but you're gonna have to create what is uh, uh, an rc.lua file so let me show you how to do that real quick Okay, unlike the other desktop environments where you actually use a graphical user interface to edit the look and feel, uh, you actually have to use a text editor. So first thing we're going to do is we are going to make the file that allows us to edit the look and feel of the awesome Windows Manager. Again, this is uh, more advanced, but uh, I'll give you a head start and show you what to do. So if you hit the Windows plus R key on your keyboard, you'll see this thing up here called Run Start, and then you can just type in uh, Nautilus, then click Enter. Um, if you want, change your view to list view. Um, I'm also going to start up uh, another window right next to it just so I can drag and drop. And then we're going to navigate to our root folder. Um, so click this little icon here. You should see the ETC folder. Double click that. And then you're going to scroll down to XDG. Click that. You're going to see something called the Awesome folder, and then you're going to see a RC Lua script. Now, um, if nothing is found in your home folder, then it defaults to this configuration. So what we're going to do is we're going to override this by creating a config file in your home. So it always looks for your home fo uh, file first. So whatever set up in your home file is what will override and set up the look and feel of the Awesome Windows Manager. So. What we're going to do is over here on the right hand side now, you're going to hit Control H. This shows all hidden files. You're going to see something called .config. Double click that. And then we're going to create a folder called Awesome. So create your uh, Awesome folder. And then once you've done that, you can drag and drop uh, your RC file there. And then now we need to edit this. Um, so uh, right click and then say open with text editor. And this is it. Um, this is a lot more hardcore than obviously using a graphical user interface. But once you get this tweak just the way you want, uh, it's it's very, very powerful. Um, you can change your layouts. You can change which files start uh, during startup. Um, you can create keyboard shortcuts, whatever you want to do. It's, it's pretty hardcore, but once you get used to it, uh, it's very, very powerful. So not for everyone. Definitely advanced. You'll have to do a lot of research to figure out how you want to edit this file. Um, you can always make up backups of this. So uh, just uh, control C control V just like in Windows you've got a copy and you could label this um, uh, you know rc.lua. Uh, old so that way um, if you break it uh, this text file then you ha at least have a working backup so um, uh, this is uh, going to get you started. Again, if you don't feel comfortable with this, uh, 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 you know, don't have to use this. Um, I just want to give anyone who's interested in this Windows environment a, uh, a, a head start. All right, as always, I hope you found this video helpful. Uh, again, the awesome Windows Manager, eh, probably for advanced users. Uh, my purpose was just to show you some of the power uh, and flexibility of the Linux operating system. So if it's not for you, that's great. Pick something else. Uh, if it's something that piques your interest, uh, check it out and do some more research on your own. Uh, as always, check out my website, greenhornlinux.com. Thanks for watching.